Chapter 901 The Serious Forces The Army of Death requests permission to enter the solar system, Gaia said in an urgent voice. Only to repeat mere seconds later, the angel race wants access to the solar system. The Church of Light representatives request an audience with the boss. The God of Sun sends his regards to King Shakuni of the Elites. Dot. Raxa, the General of Lucifer, requests permission to gain entry. The moment a dark faction force entered the vicinity, immediately the weapon guns of all the other ships turned towards the ship. As it was all fun and games in the universe, unless it was a faction war. The feud between light and dark faction ran deeper in the real universe than it did inside Omega, as the hate amongst the two sides was irreconcilable. Although clashes were common near border regions, the Milky Way was technically not a border region and legally owned by the Church of Light, which is why their displeasure at seeing an enemy so deep into their territory was visible. Raxa! This is not the battle line you are way too inside the Milky Way for comfort. Retreat now or face the consequences, the priest from the Church of Light said as Raxa laughed at the empty threat and replied. Consequences? Like what really? Will you throw a bit of holy water on me? Hoping I would burn as if I was a vampire? PFFT ha 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 dot. The priest grit his teeth. Because he knew it was true. The consequences the priest threatened him of were nothing serious as being the followers of the Church of Light. They walked on the principles of lifelong non-violence. Rudra, who was silently watching this scenario realized the merit of his choice to not join the church's faction at least. Because if he did this was his future for the rest of his life. Being walked on by chumps of the enemy faction. He may not do anything. But this is my territory, and I should the undefeated do not welcome you or your master in mine. Be gone before you face the wrath of the grim reaper I wield. Rudra's voice boomed. And Raxa looked at him with seriousness. Shakuni the undefeated. The legendary man who killed the god Lucifer in Omega while being immortal. Clap. 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 What an absolute legend. Wow. Raxa said with sarcasm evident in his voice as he tried to elicit a reaction out of Rudra. Don't let small achievements get to your head, boy. This is the real universe now, and here in the real universe. Lord Lucifer can kill you with a flick of his finger while being four galaxies away. So count your lucky stars to be still alive and breathing and just hope. He never comes to these backward parts personally, so that you may continue to live. Dot. Rudra knew bullshit when he heard one. And this was a steaming, stinking hot pile of grade A bullshit. Because if Lucifer was actually capable of killing him from long distance, he would already have died a million deaths. Raxa expected Rudra to stop smiling and to cower in fear as he said this. However, Rudra's response shocked him completely. Rudra said, Blows a kiss. Tell Lucifer that his father Shakuni is waiting to give him a recap of the ass whopping he gave him in hell. All across the universe any day of the week that he wants. If he's too scared to come here, then name the place and time for me to be at, and I will be there to whoop his ass all over the universe. Dot. Raxa stuttered when he heard Rudra's reply, his insides turning green with anger, as he could not form proper replies. Why why you what did you say? Unfazed Rudra said. What did you hear? Are you partially deaf? Moron! Raxa warned Rudra. Don't take it too far mortal. You may have killed the lord with trickery, but here in the real world, even I am tier 6. Mess with me, and I will kill you faster than you can call yourself father. Dot. Rudra. Father! 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 I am this idiot son's handsome father. Rudra said, as he taunted Raxa clearly giving him absolutely no face at all. It was at this moment that Gaia received a message as she read it in Rudra's mind. The message was from Ismodius, the representative of the army of death, and it said, My friend, I'm sure you are a strong warrior, but there is a difference between skill levels of a skill in Omega and in the real world. You won't be the same fighter outside the game as you were inside. So do be careful on how much you provoke your opponent. It takes hundreds of years to master a skill enough to bring it to Omega's level, and even I have only mastered a single move in my move set yet. Dot. Asmodeus's warning was fair, but never could he have expected that it was pointless for a guy like Rudra. Meanwhile, Naomi... Naomi was battling for her life fiercely ever since the dirty mana washed in after the first awakening, and while she managed to survive the initial few hours of the immediate death, her condition went from bad to worse in the following few hours where everyone else recovered. The true problem being faced by Naomi was that she having sex with a tier 5 cultivator as a father gave birth to children who had a much better and enhanced mana veins. These mana veins when being developed inside her womb clashed with her own natural mana with her inferior mana being overpowered by Rudra's stronger one. Soon her body began nourishing the womb with mana instead of the body itself and Naomi began to pale out. After the delivery, 
Although the kids were healthy and safely born, the conflicting mana inside her body was still strongly present. And when the dirty mana from the environment also entered the party, all three polluted and poisoned her body. Naomi was too weak to give birth to Rudra's children, who needed a much stronger warrior as a partner. Had Rudra been the angelic god that he was when he consummated with Naomi, she would have died from the pregnancy within the first three months itself, with her mortal body not being able to nourish the kid without killing her off. This was a sad reality of gods mating with mortals, which is why 99.9% .9 demigod stories start with them being an orphan. Because their fathers are usually as asterisk, 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 who don't give a fluff, and their mothers are dead from childbirth. Naomi knew that she needed to somehow weather out this pain and survive. Not only for herself, but also for her husband and children, who needed her desperately. Hence making a bold choice, Naomi whispered the magic words. Log into Sigma. Dot. Space warping around her as the tattoo on her right arm began to glow. The Universal Queen transported her into the Universal Game Sigma. Meanwhile, Max. Max had already logged into Sigma once he stabilized from all the pain of the first awakening. Not wanting to miss out on the first day quests and special rewards in the new world. Max was extremely excited to enter Sigma. Having entered Omega much later than the launch date and living in an age where 95% of the player base was better than him because they were playing the game for over a decade. Max imagined Sigma to be a very beautiful place where grass would be lush green. There would be weird alien species of trees and animals and lots of exciting quests to complete. Max believed he would start from a random beginner village and if he was lucky, he would befriend a local chief and then get a special village quest to kickstart his gaming career. He hoped to meet the myriad of races across the universe and admire their stark glory while being respected for his own skills. However, his vision was completely broken when the land that he was upon logging in turned out to be a black slash grayish world. Soot and dust fell from the sky above as although there was color. Everything pretty much looked like a shade of gray due to the lack of proper illumination and in heavy rainfall of soot. He was in the streets of a very busy city that felt like New York as the streets were narrow and highly packed with traffic and the buildings were tall yet constructed in such a way that each individual apartment inside was barely enough to be called a room for one. Max was shoved and pushed around by random strange alien species like hobgoblins and trolls whose walking path Max was blocking by standing idly and gawking at his surroundings. Max was in Black Lake City of Morning Star Planet, and he was an unknown ant in this endless sea of Tier Zero traffic. Max's universe view came crashing down on himself as he was completely taken aback from the scenery around him. He was living in a chocolatey world up till this moment, and now was finally the time where he needed to wake up to reality. Forward slash forward slash forward slash guess what? Mass release tomorrow. Forward slash forward slash forward slash. Chapter 902 come. The reason why Red Red chose to pick a fight here today with the envoy of Lucifer, was because of two very calculated reasons. One, he needed to showcase his abilities to the higher powers, so that they gain some respect for him, and try leave him in Earth alone. Even if it is for a short time. Two, he might as well make his take on the Dark Faction crystal clear, and announce to the universe that he is pro-light and anti-dark. To achieve this goal, he needed to bait his enemy into believing that he was way too impudent, and needed to be taught a lesson in respect. Rax had definitely had it up to his neck by this point as his voice started to tremble with anger when he addressed Rudra. Although he had instructions to not tangle with the earthling today, he was re-evaluating the situation. Oh, you think you are such a big shot immortal? All right. I will humor you. Accept a duel of death against me with the Universal Queen as witness. Reject me if you are a cockless see asterisk asterisk asterisk. Gaia. System notification. Player Raxa has challenged you to a duel of death in the Immortals Arena. Since you are the challenged party, you can set the terms of the fight and the weapon's limit. Do you accept? Yes. No. Rudra hummed as he saw the system screen. He was perplexed by a game notification, since he was in reality. However, Gaia cleared her confusion pretty quickly. Gaia said, Master, the game Sigma is stretched out throughout the universe. Everything in the universe is a part of the game, however, the laws governing various parts are different. There are three basic zones into which the universe is divided. Safe zones, wild zones, and battle zones. Safe zones are areas governed by the Universal Queen and have an active soul barrier around the region which means that no items can be dropped upon death and there will be no loss of life slash experience. Master for an area to be considered as a safe zone. It would need to be surrendered permanently to the Universal Queen for governance. The Queen cannot annex territories herself by her own free will and can only govern territories assigned to her by will. Master, while soul barriers can be purchased by private organizations, unless they have the support of a god of life, 
like Benyager to perform resurrection magic for them. Perfectly resurrecting the dead without any memory slash attribute loss is an art only mastered by the Universal Queen. The safety of an individual inside a safe zone is guaranteed by the Universal Queen herself, which is why if one died in a safe zone, they are resurrected for free, and the cause of their death is investigated by the local authorities. Wild zones, on the other hand, are areas that have no Universal Queen jurisdiction. These areas still do have an active soul barrier to prevent dead souls from the corruption of the elements, but have no active arbitration. If one dies inside a wild zone, they need to pay a fee to the Universal Queen to be resurrected. There is a loss experience, and there is also a possibility to drop equipment upon death. Theoretically, one could die infinite deaths inside a wild zone, and a safe zone, and still be the same individual, because the Universal Queen can perform the perfect form of resurrection. With one only going as low as level zero. In a way, all players are immortals. However, Master, there is a third zone in the universe called the Battle Zones, or what we refer as reality. Private planets, space stations, and everything that is not a part of the Sigma infrastructure is considered a battle zone. Deaths in battle zones are real and permanent, and although a priest slash healer capable of performing resurrection magic could resurrect an individual if their soul had not dissipated yet. A resurrected individual by a priest is never the same person as parts of their life memory and personality are always lost upon resurrecting. Although theoretically resurrecting could be done an infinite number of times, the limit for battle zone resurrecting has been observed at 3 for all individuals across all races. No matter how hard anyone tried. Nobody could be resurrected for the fourth time. For now, Earth is a planet that has no active soul barrier master. Which means that at least at the moment resurrection magic is altogether impossible to be done on the planet, and all deaths are permanent. However, Earth is still part of the universal infrastructure, and classified as a battle zone with you as its warlord. Your word is law in this part of the galaxy, and deaths are permanent. However, there are some universal laws that still apply to you one of which is the duel of death, which is enforceable by the Universal Queen. You can decline without consequences, or accept to settle this dispute. Dot. Rudra gained a lot of clarity about how things worked with Gaia's explanation. He was truly grateful for the A.I's support as without her, he would make a lot of uninformed decisions. After thinking Rudra said, I will accept on one condition Raxa. Raxa was genuinely surprised to hear this. He had thrown in the challenge on a whim. Never did he think that a mortal would actually accept it. Is the mortal truly out of his mind? I am putting my life on the line. So you must put something on the line too if you lose. And I don't want your stupid head. It serves me no good. If I win I want something more tangible. Like gold. Blueprints or resources. Rudra said, as he got a flood of messages from the other representatives, who thought that he had absolutely lost his mind. Raxa thought for a moment before replying. 140 patrol battleships. 10 million universal gold and one legendary artifact. Dot. Rudra had no idea whether or not it was a fair offer, but after Gaia assured him that it was he accepted the dual request. All major factions reported this development back to the headquarters, and within minutes the area above Earth was abandoned. Rudra was teleported from his location into some unknown arena. As a system notification told him that he had been teleported to the Immortals Arena. The Immortals Arena was a grand stage controlled by the Universal Queen, and it was the stage where God settled their disputes and fought to death. A fight between gods could easily tear apart planets and create unnecessary destruction across the universe, which is why the special arena was constructed using the finest materials found throughout the universe. Made by a team of the greatest grandmaster dwarves using the power of a dying neutron star. The arena was nearly indestructible. As Rudra walked onto the battle area, he saw thousands of gods present in the spectator stand staring down on him trying to gauge his stats and his level as he was flooded with inspection spells. Moments later the entire arena was in a disarray as nobody could inspect Rudra, and were shocked to know that a freshling out of Omega could actually not be inspected by omnipotent gods. Murmurs turned into heated discussions as the dark faction gods frowned upon noticing this development. Loud cheers enveloped Raxa as he walked onto the arena and Rudra took a good look at his opponent for the first time. It was difficult to estimate Raxa's race. He looked like a humanoid figure. However the color of his skin was pitch black and there were runic linings glowing in red running throughout his body. He had a set of wings on his back. However, they were not demon-like wings, but looked something like wings off a bat. In the end, Rudra did not care about his race of origin anyway, as he did not fear the skill set of his opponent. Raxa brought out his weapon, which was a single-edged saber, with a nasty curve at its top, and pointed it towards Rudra as he said, This arrogance of yours that you wear on your sleeve will be your undoing. Mortal. Dot. The moment he used the word mortal, the gods went into uproar, 
as the immortal arena was not a place for mortals at all. In the history of the universe only two mortals had ever been invited to fight here by the Universal Queen, and both went on to become Tier 8 powerhouses. Rudra scanned around the building, and saw a myriad of races, and gods seated in the stands. Their gazes sharp, and their auras booming with power. It had been a long time since Rudra had been surrounded by such strong individuals that were his equal. As except for a handful of gods and Omega, there was nobody to rival his strength. Ha uh ha. -huh. This is it. A new start. A new ladder to climb. Well better make a grand entrance then. Let the universe know that Shakuni the Undefeated is here to conquer them all. Rudra thought as he smugged confidently. Spreading his arms wide Rudra said. You say I'm arrogant? I say damn right I am. That's pride. Pride in the human I am. The patriarch of the true elites guild. And the enigma known as Shakuni the Undefeated. If you really think you can beat me, then come. Clash with my Excalibur if you dare. Dot. Rudra unsheathed both his swords and the glistening blades drew a roar of approval from the light faction gods. The newbie now had the attention of the universe. Chapter 903 Shocking the Universe If you really think you can beat me, then come! Clash with my Excalibur if you dare! Rudra challenged as he unsheathed both his swords. A roar of approval reigning from the light faction gods. The name Excalibur caused the gods to murmur a lot amongst themselves as inspection spells were thrown towards Rudra's weapon. And everyone was shocked to see that it was indeed a sword named Excalibur, and one of Divine Grade too. Everyone knew the legendary tales of the real Excalibur wielded by the Archangel Michael. Which is why seeing a similar sword in the hand of a rookie, possibly not even a tier 6 god caused envious glances to be thrown Rivers' way. Only select gods had access to divine items at tier 6. Although it was not extremely uncommon to have a divine weapon, it was still rare to have one as fine as Shakuni wielded. He has a fine sword. Is this warrior really fresh out of Omega? His armor and his second sword are formidable too and I am pretty sure he carries a mana stone around his neck. Impressive dot. He must be capable considering the weapons he has managed to amass. This will be an interesting fight to say the least dot. Will a sword really matter in this fight though? Weapons are only but a tool. It's the skill that matters dot. Everyone became more attentive towards Rudra. As if his brazen attitude did not help him capture everyone's attention. His excellent equipment definitely did. Raxa spat on the ground as he said. So what if you have a nice sword and a nice face? It will amount to nothing but spoils of war for me. As I plunder it off your corpse. Dot. System notification. The battle will start in 10 seconds. Take your fighting stances. And prepare to engage. This is a fight to the death. And the loser will not be able to resurrect post-death. As per the rules set for this bout. There is no time limit. The use of potions is restricted. Good luck fighters. May the best fighter win. The Universal Queen announced the start of the fight in her own voice. And instantly Rudra got into the mental fight zone. His breathing became rhythmic as he focused sharply on his enemy's footwork. Today, the objective was not to win, but to humiliate the enemy completely before killing him. He had one chance to make a lasting first impression. And he was not going to let it go to waste. 3. 2.1 Fight The countdown hit zero and Raxa charged towards Ridra instantly. Closing the gap with speed three times the speed of sound. And Ridra returned the gesture by charging towards him with an even greater speed as he charged towards him with speeds five times the speed of sound. Kaboom! The moment Rudra's Grim Reaper collided with Rax's curved blade, he was sent flying backwards, as Rudra completely outsped and overpowered him in the initial exchange. 120. 000. zero, zero. Raxa crashed against the indestructible ground and friction caused his skin to bruise and burn as he was sent dragging through the ground for a good 200 meters before he came to a stop. The light faction gods were in an uproar as cheers rained down on Rudra whereas the dark faction gods were stunned silent. Rudra's speed was unbelievably fast, and his strength was enough to send a veteran warrior like Raxa flying. He seemed like a genuine threat at the moment. Raxa dusted himself off and stood up. However, the overconfidence in his eyes had dimmed considerably, as this one exchange told him that his opponent was not a normal mortal. As only peak tier 6 gods had this sort of ridiculous power inside themselves. Can he be a god? No. That's impossible. Not even Lucifer himself could complete the tutorial and come out as a god. He can't possibly be better than the Lord himself. Raxa thought to himself as he tried launching long-distance spells on Rudra. Rudra could see the laws of the universe being manipulated as Raxa called on the elements of water and wind, creating a water attack that Rudra had never seen before and definitely at the peak of tier 5 in terms of power. Haley's Whirlpool! Raxa shouted as he launched a unique and destructive whirlpool towards Rudra, who calmly let it come closer. If he wanted to Rudra could have easily used his sword skills to cut the attack apart. 
however today was the day to show off his skills. Rudra waited till the last second until the whirlpool came closer to him before opening his palm and using the move Space Buster. The whirlpool was sucked into the wormhole of space, and a second later redirected right above Raxa as his own move crashed into his body as a result. What? How is this possible? Spatial manipulation? Raxa could not believe his eyes. He lost a whopping 650. 000 HP from his own attack. However, the psychological damage was more. It was not impossible to learn spatial manipulation. However, to do what Rudra just did, one needed to be a master in spatial manipulation. If Rudra was not a master in the skill, he would need to chant the spell and connect the runic patterns to invoke the move, taking no less than 30 40 seconds. However, Rudra insta cast the attack, and he did it without causing large mana fluctuations in the surroundings, which was proof that he had mastered the spell. Mastery and spatial manipulation was one of the hardest in the universe second only to time. And many gods could not even master a single space-based skill to master level even after a thousand years of practice. Yet Rudra somehow mastered one when he had not even been out of Omega for a full week. This time around the gods started to lose their minds. Although Rudra's power and speed were already beyond impressive causing the gods to develop some form of respect for the boy. The feat of achieving mastery in a spatial skill was something that made them start looking at Rudra as if he was a freak. Who is this new bee? What faction does he belong to? Fetch me his details. Someone quick. Is this some old monster I don't recognize? Who is this warrior? Why is a kid wearing Serial's boots? And look like an angel? Is this Serial's halfling? Dot. The AI of various gods slowly filled them up about the public information on Shakuni the Undefeated. And when people read that Shakuni defeated Lucifer inside Omega to help Hades reclaim the throne of hell, they finally had sweat dripping from their heads. All the gods present here today had played Omega once upon a time, and understood the difficulty of winning a realm war. Their respect for Rudra had increased exponentially, as now, they watched the battle unfold at the absolute edge of their seats. Even the dark faction gods were restless now. Raxa was around for over 400 years now, and a familiar face in the faction. Although it would not be a huge loss if he died in battle. It would still leave a sour taste in their mouths to lose one of theirs to the light. Raxa's robes were tattered, and the armor underneath was clearly visible now. The fiendish humanoid looked even more terrifying now, with the clothes of decency covering him tattered. Hate was clearly visible in his eyes, as he flared his aura to suppress Rudra. A dark aura washed over Rudra. And if he wanted to he could easily counter the aura washing over him with his own aura. However Gaia advised him against it. The various tier 6 and tier 7 gods present here today could not pry into Rudra's level, and were all only guessing his strength at the moment. If he unleashed his aura, it would be confirmed that he was at tier 6. Which would take away the element of mystery Rudra had. Which is why she gave an alternative solution to withstand the aura. Rudra used the move taught to him by Michael. The holy mana reinforcement as his body shined in a thin layer of holy mana around himself. Negating the effects of the dark aura suppressing him. Rudra created a lot of buzz by using this move, as if the appearance and equipment was not a hint enough. Now Rudra was also borrowing angelic moves. Who is this boy? How is he connected to the angels? He has no wings. Is he really an angel? Is this a new archangel? Why does his information show that he is from hashtag age 2047? Since when do archangels go to trash planets for breeding? Dot. Good. 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 You are full of surprises, Shikumi. I can see how you may have troubled Lord Lucifer in Omega. Truly a formidable warrior you are. Worthy of the arrogance you wear on your sleeves. Initially, I never thought I would need to waste my hard-earned divine essence on a pointless fight like this. However, you have forced my hand. Let me show you the true difference between a mortal and an immortal, and why no matter how high your skills are you can never match up to a god. Get ready to receive divine judgment now. Raxa knew that he needed to end this fight quickly before he was out of moves to use against Rudra. The reason why he abandoned all hope and moved to using divine attacks was because a divine attack could only be chipped down using divine power. A tier 5 attack can slow down a tier 6 attack. Reduce its power, but never completely stop it. It was the only hope that he had to win this fight now. Forward slash forward slash forward slash a clarification. Only a few gods like Archangel Serial. Michael. Hades. Omar know that Rudra is a tier 6 god because they are connected to him via Omega and received updates of that iteration of the game from the Universal Queen. To the wider universe. The information of Rudra Rajput is classified under grade yellow and they can only see basic information published by the Queen on Rudra. This is also why they don't know that he is a full angel, and why the Archangels paid him a visit in person to censor that information before it is leaked. Hope this clears any confusion on why Raxa believes him to be Tier 5, 
and why the other gods are only juicing his level forward slash forward slash forward slash. Chapter 904 True Prowess Let me show you the true difference between a mortal and an immortal, and why no matter how high your skills are you can never match up to a god. Get ready to receive divine judgment now, Raxa said as he prepared his strongest attack. The dark faction god knew that Rudra was gaining the upper hand in this battle, and the only way to reverse the tides was to go all out. He had a strong belief that Rudra would not be able to hold out against his divine attack. Because no matter how strong one was, a freshling out of Omega could never truly be a full-fledged god. Rax's strongest move was called Abyssal Doom, and it was a sword slash laced with the element of void. As he gathered energy around his sword, space-time itself seemed to bend around the curved blade as the pressure exerted by the attack caused even the calmest gods to feel a little uneasy. Facing such a terrifying power, Rudra was as calm as the ocean his blue eyes still radiating supreme confidence, as while he seemed to be patiently waiting for his opponent to attack. In reality, he was silently preparing his strongest attack too. Raxa finished accumulating divine energy after about 15 seconds, and unleashed a sword slash so powerful, that it could cut the island of Madagascar in half, if used on planet Earth. This is it. Although the mortal with strongness is as far as he goes. He looks unusually calm. Do you think he has a divine artifact that can help him block this attack? We lost a promising seedling today. The dark faction are cruel to challenge a mortal to a death match in the immortal arena. And the mortal is foolish to accept. Had he kept his head down and waited for a few more years before he was tier 6, he would not have died so horribly today. Look at the poor fellow. Not even trying to dodge his doom. Well, any resistance is futile anyway. So maybe it's the right choice to make. Dot. The gods had given up on the fight. In their minds it was all but over now, that Rudra was facing down the barrel of a tier 6 attack. However, every single god present felt a cold goosebump run down their spine when they saw Rudra grin seeing the attack approach. Is something wrong with his head? Why is he smiling? Does he have some trump card hidden? What could it be? Rudra planted his feet firmly into the ground. His eyes focused on the approaching attack as he extended both his palms towards the incoming attack. Having divine energy inside his body for the last 25 seconds. Rudra finally unleashed his strongest attack to counter Raxus. With a smile on his face Rudra said, Elite Blast! A blast of pure divine madra infused with the qualities of Nirvana flame burst out of Rudra's palms, creating a force so powerful and unstoppable that the incoming sword slash looked like a wooden sword trying to stop the advance of a tank. The sword slash dissipated upon first contact and dispersed as if it was never a force strong enough to be taken seriously as Rudra's attack went on to obliterate Raxa, consuming everything from his body his mind to his very soul. A blinding light covered the arena as even the gods had to look away from the flash as to not damage their eyes. However, when the power subsided and they looked at the arena, a collective gasp could be heard throughout the arena as only molten metal of the armor that Raxa was wearing remained in a puddle where he stood as not even his ashes remained when the attack subsided. What? Our XA was killed? Just like that? Just how strong was that blast? It definitely had divine power. This kid is a god? A god straight out of Omega? Who TF is this warrior? A god out of Omega? Impossible. Is his potential even higher than the Archangels themselves? That blast. Is he tier 7 already? Stay away from this madman. Don't antagonize him or his planet. Shakuni the Undefeated. Remember the name Dot. Rudra smiled in satisfaction, as the entire arena was thrown into chaos over his performance. A system notification announcement followed. System notification player Shakuni has killed player RAXA in a duel to death. Player RAXA has been eliminated, and the decided war indemnity is paid to player Shakuni after plundering Rax's resources. The dark faction has lost a god. Everyone looked at Rudra with weary and caution now. As he finally got the respect he came here looking for. Rudra had announced his arrival to the universe with a grand entry, and had put all forces on alert. Although he wanted nothing more from today's display at this second. Hazrael came down from the stands on her angel wings and declared loudly to the light faction gods that Shakuni and Earth were allies of the angels. Shakuni's use of angelic moves, as well as angelic equipment like Excalibur already had many speculating about the relationship between the two parties. But Hazrael's declaration made it clear. Hazrael emphasized that Rudra was a human ally eliminating any rumors that he was an angel. However, Hazrael's entry completely paled compared to what happened afterwards. The entire realm trembled as energy 1,000 times stronger than the one unleashed by Rudra using the elite blast landed onto the immortal platform, forming cracks into the indestructible surface as everyone including Hazriel and Rudra fell onto their knees due to the pressure being exerted. A tier 9 god had just descended upon the realm. 
his reason to visit, and identity was still unknown. Forward slash forward slash forward slash dear readers. The web novel management has instructed me to end the book latest by the 20th. So expect a fast and erratic chapter dump in the next 48 hours. Buckle up and enjoy. As they will be the last for this book. Maximum comments will be appreciated. GY forward slash forward slash forward slash. Chapter 905 The Unnamed God. Rudra had never felt compelled to kneel before. However this time around his body seemed to react before his mind could even register what was going on. As by the time, he saw the sky open up and incredible divine energy pour down. He was already kneeling. Awaiting the arrival of the tier 9 entity. It was not just him who was kneeling. It was also Hazriel who was on her knees, and every single god in the arena whether from the dark faction or the light. Stepping out of the divine energy. A middle-aged man walked out with golden wings extending from his back as a kind smile could be seen on his face. Greetings unnamed god, Hazriel said. And immediately the entire arena followed suit as regardless of the faction, they all greeted the unnamed god. Rudra looked at the visage of the unnamed god with his galactic eyes. He had heard a lot about this legendary figure in Omega. However, he never had the good fortune of meeting him in person. Seeing him for the first time now, Rudra understood that the being was as mystical and powerful in the universe as he was in Omega, with power of a thousand suns radiating within every fiber of his body. The unnamed god ruffled Hazriel's hair as if playing with the hair of a grandchild. As he smiled amiably towards Rudra, Rudra did not expect the direct attention of such a powerful being to be on him. As he unleashed his pressure and said in a soothing voice, at ease, dot. Flowers bloomed and the barren arena turned into a lush green garden within a split second of him commanding everyone to be at ease. As quite literally the place turned from a bloodthirsty arena to a heavenly paradise. Rudra stood up and realized that he was a full two feet shorter than the unnamed god who towered over him. Even without his suppressive aura, the unnamed god was extremely intimidating up close as Rudra got the chills just by looking at his face. In a way he looked exactly like a supermodel turned father into his fifties. As gray and white hair adorned his handsome head along with a slightly wrinkled face. His eyes a shiny golden in color and his teeth white and radiant. One could make out that although the man was smiling at the moment, the power contained in his eyes was enough to incinerate a being like Rudra with his glare alone. The unnamed god said, Usually, when I give out a banquet invitation, People respond immediately. You are the first individual for whom I have to descend down to the immortal realm personally. Dot. Rudra frowned clearly perplexed as to what the god meant by this. When Gaia reminded him that one of the rewards of him completing the revival of a religion quest was the golden invitation that he received, allowing him to attend a grand banquet in Sigma. When Rudra was reminded he immediately connected the dots and realized exactly what the supreme god was talking about and a deep red blush appeared on his face. Rudra had genuinely forgotten about the invitation that he received so long ago. With so many things happening in between so rapidly, he never had the chance to sit back and think about the banquet. Rudra replied earnestly, Apologies. The unnamed god waved it off and snapped his fingers, and the very next second Rudra and him were on the surface of a different planet sitting on alien woolly mammoth-like creatures, riding on what seemed to be a hunter's trail. No need to apologize. I'm here today to purely settle a curiosity of mine. The unnamed god said. Rudra remained silent as he let the god continue at his own pace. One of my many abilities is the ability to make divinations. I can see glimpses of the future that might be and the past that could have been. One of my hobbies is to try and make one of the realities I have seen in the future move away from its destined path and change the course of history. However, in my over 2.5 million earthen years of existence, there had been no changes in the overall course of a future no matter how hard I tried. Until now. Until with you. If a world was destined to be wiped out by demons on, say, local year 2023, even if I tried to alter the course of history by planting a hero, giving prophets prophecies on how to avoid the catastrophe, or even provide resources and aid directly for them to be aided in the war effort, the end result was always the same, which was the destruction of the planet in 2023. If not by demons, there would be epidemics. If not epidemics, there would be a random god wiping it out on a whim because the hero planet in the world antagonized him. No matter the reason, the world was always destroyed and fate line was restored. In this universe, to break away from one's karmic fate is the hardest challenge ever. However, some way, somehow, you manage to change your destiny and that of your planet in the process. Earth was supposed to be wiped out upon first awakening when I last saw the divination four years ago. However, when I saw one about six months ago, the fate had been successfully changed as Earth survived and thrived with you as its leader. I have selected 17. 243 champions throughout my lifetime reincarnated their souls 
invested in their growth yet, never once did anyone manage to defy their fate, but you did. My experiment is finally a success, and it is all thanks to you. Dot. Rudra felt the secrets of the universe unravel around him, as the unnamed god revealed truths far more complex than a being like him should know. However, the question remained, why was he telling Rudra all this? What was his endgame? Chapter 906 Naomi's Choice Sigma was meant to be a breathing room for Naomi. Her real body hurt so much. She could do nothing but hope that somehow just like when using a VR pod and entering Omega, Sigma would also help her lose the pains of the real world and enter a virtual one. Alas, Sigma was different from Omega. The entire universe was part of Sigma, and her flailing body was teleported as a whole inside the game. Naomi coughed violently, as a mouthful of blood escaped her lips, as a system notification informed her that her HP had dropped to a single digit. Naomi was not at all impressed by the background in Sigma. Unlike Max who started from the Tier 0 planet, the Morning Star planet. Naomi, who was a peak Tier 3 player before Omega ended actually managed to be evaluated as a Tier 1 player by the Universal Queen upon first awakening, and hence her starting point was the Dewstar planet. Dot. Dewstar planet was better than Morning Star in the sense that there was no ash falling from the skies, and the streets here were only moderately crowded. However, except those points, it was pretty much the same. It was like entering London in the 1800s, when it felt a mixture of the Middle Ages and Industrial Revolution. As although horse carts could be seen on the roads, and the houses were still made of bricks instead of cement, the residents had lost that homely village touch. The bustled and busy of the city turning them into coal personalities. Oh no! I would much rather have died on Earth than this wretched place. Naomi spoke as she assessed her surroundings with disgust. Having been in labor for nine months, she had became accustomed to not finding even a single speck of dust around her. As the maid and the cleaning robots washed the floor and the surfaces around her at least 15 times a day. Hence when facing pollution and smoke and dust all around Naomi felt a lot disgusted. To make matters worse. There were octopus-faced aliens all around her whose head blobbed front and back as they walked. Which would look funny to most men, but looked disgusting to Naomi. Naomi puked. And with that blood-filled vomit, she lost even the very last point of HP that she had as a system notification informed her that she had died. System notification, you have died inside the safe zone due star city. Cause of death illness. Note, having died inside a safe zone you will be resurrected free of charge. Whether it was her luck or her misery. Naomi had died inside a safe zone. Which meant that the Universal Queen had to rescue her free of charge. However having died of natural causes it was not as simple as it seemed. System notification, since you have died of natural causes, Perfect resurrection will not be possible. The natural body you possess has a mana clash inside which would need electrocuted draining to cure. The resulting procedure will result in player to lose 95% of their memory fragment. Do you wish to continue with the procedure? Or do you wish to be returned back to Earth in a coffin? Fate had been exceptionally cruel to Naomi today. She had decided to visit Sigma on a whim and did not hope to be saved by the Universal Queen. When she saw the system screen that told her she would be resurrected free of charge, she had became elated beyond words. However, when the price of her resurrection was explained, she fell from the highest of highs to the lowest of lows. She had a choice to make. Whether to live as a new person, losing all her memories, or whether to die with her memories intact, and it was truly a cruel choice for any individual to make. Letting go of her identity would mean death in a way, because the Naomi that she was, was going to die either way in the process, and only a fragment of hers would survive as a new person. The faces of Rudra, Jake and Amy flashed in her mind as she started to feel a soul-wrenching pain inside her formless soul as she could not bear the thought of leaving them behind and moving on. It was one of the most difficult decisions she had ever made. But when she really asked her soul what she should do the answer was very clear. Although for her as an individual choosing to live a new life would be the best thing to do. But her new life would really just be her body living a new life as without her memory she was but just a piece of flesh. However if that piece of flesh existed it would cause nothing but misery to all her loved ones, who would keep looking for a glimpse of her true self inside that body, which would have lost it all. She could see Rudra searching the heavens for a cure and being distressed about the state of his wife, and how Jake and Amy would cry to see their own mom not recognize them. She wanted to live. Given a choice, she would never chose to die. However, with it being the more humane thing to do for her family, Naomi chose to be sent back to earth inside a coffin. Here serene body was sent back to earth as per her wishes with a letter attached in her own handwriting on the top. A last message that she had for her loved ones. It read, To Jake and Amy, Sorry my dear children mother will not be around to see you grow into beautiful toddlers, or naughty children, or rebellious teenagers, or powerful warriors. 
But don't worry. I will surely be watching from the stars. You both have no idea how much mother loves you and how much you both mean to her. But as much as I know that you both love me too, it isn't nearly as close as how much your father loves me. So promise me, my children, when the time comes, you will be the support of your dad, shielding him from the evils in his own heart. As I'm not afraid of anyone else being able to hurt him as much as he is capable of hurting himself. And sure, Rudra will raise you to be fine humans. However, I never want you both to be pressured by the Rajput family name. Remember, you are the son and daughter of the bastard child Naomi too, as much as you are of the protector of humanity. If your father scolds you too much, run away to Uncle Max or Uncle Nama and meet with. Or you can always go to Grandpa Johnny. And no matter what, always remember that mother loved you. To Rudra, I will wait for you in the ninth heaven, my love. Dot. It was a sad day for humanity when the coffin showed up where her hospital bed was. Naomi Rajput was dead. Only her memories remained inside the minds and hearts of her loved ones. Forward slash forward slash forward slash spoiler note Naomi Rajput will make a comeback in MMORPG Rebirth of the Strongest Vampire God forward slash forward slash forward slash. Chapter 907 The Fate of the Universe Rudra got the confirmation that the reason why he was reincarnated was because of the unnamed God. He had been the one to chose him to be his champion on a whim. And he was the reason why Rudra got a second chance in life all those years ago. In a way Rudra owed everything he was today to the unnamed God. And it was quite an overwhelming feeling for him to meet his benefactor today. However, as much as Rudra wanted to believe that the unnamed god wanted nothing more than the best for a mere tier 6 god like Rudra, he knew that was not how things worked in the universe. For the unnamed god to come down personally to meet him. For him to take this time to explain fate to him. It meant that the god desperately wanted something from him. For a god like the unnamed god to want something from Rudra. It was sure to not be something simple. Rudra asked politely, I am flattered to be chosen to be your champion. How may I serve you further, my lord? The unnamed god chuckled. A small tear escaping his eyes due to mirth. As he said, Oh dear boy, if you could just see the future like I can, you would surely find this conversation very funny. Dot. The unnamed god could not believe that the man who he was destined to serve as his first commander was addressing him as his lord. By defying fate, Rudra was on trajectory to become the strongest entity in this universe and one of the few who could save this universe from the impending doom that it faced. Ever since the day that the unnamed god was cursed with the ability to see the future, he foresaw the end of the universe. Ever since that day, he had been systematically looking for solutions to somehow alter that destiny, to keep this universe from imploding upon itself, and to keep the universe from turning into a cold and lifeless space. He was one of the strongest supporters of the Sigma Order. He was the one to strongly support the Universal Queen's installation to stabilize Universal Order, and as a result, he delayed the impending doom by a few million years. However, the queen herself was not enough to change the fate of the universe completely. To change fate, one needed to become a fate defier, as only those who had broken free from the burden of their own destiny and escaped the very system could someday challenge destiny herself. To accomplish this mission, he trained the angels. He married Binyagur and raised many capable children. He became the patron of many races, and he erased the knowledge of his very name from the universe. Becoming unnamed, he desperately tried to escape the constraints of destiny. But a last destiny had a tight grip on a tier 9 existence like himself. In the history of the universe, there had never been an individual to have completed Omega and walked out a tier 6 god until Rudra, and it was nothing short of a miraculous feat to have been achieved. But what was even more miraculous was the fact that Rudra had become the only god to be a fate defier. If Rudra could see karmic lines, he would notice that the ones around him warped like he was a black hole. His very existence a chaos to the order of the universe, and one that the universe wanted to get rid of badly. In his millions of divinations, the unnamed god had only ever seen ten possible futures where the universe survived. And in seven of those ten futures, it was him serving Rudra as his first commander, leading the army of angels into war. The unnamed god had a lot that he wanted to tell Rudra. However, fate was a cruel thing to tempt. Smiling amiably at Rudra, the unnamed god moved at a speed that Rudra could not even comprehend as a chop to his neck knocked him out cold from over the back of the animal he was riding, catching his body before it fell. The unnamed god lowered it down to the ground as gently as possible. As he started the procedure to plant within Rudra two of the most miraculous treasures of the universe. The tier 9 seed of rebirth. And the tier 10 seed of chaos. When he retrieved them from his inventory in the single split second that the seed of chaos was exposed to the elements. It absorbed the life from the entire planet. Killing its over 1.3 million inhabitants and hundreds of millions of animals in the process. The seed of rebirth then tried to counteract the effects but being a little weaker than the seed of chaos, 
it could only undo 70% of the damage caused. These treasures were not something that could be handled by a tier 6 god like Ridra. However, if Ridra was not a god, there would not be the slightest of hope for him to suppress these at all. The unnamed god proceeded to suppress the strength of these treasures to a level where they would not hinder Rudra's day-to-day -day life upon being installed however he seemed to age from a middle-aged looking man to an old man in the process of suppressing the might of these treasures. Cutting open Rudra's back. He carefully planted the seeds in Rudra's kidneys. Before healing the wound up. Sweating and panting profusely. The unnamed god looked around himself as he could see fate lines sinking deep into Rudra's body. But unable to alter his destiny with him already becoming a fate defier before this procedure. Talking to Rudra's AI Gaia. With the Universal Queen as the witness. The unnamed god said, I leave the fate of the universe in your hands now. Master, your life will be a cruel one full of challenges, and you are destined to fall in battle. But your death will not be the end of your journey, for you have a greater burden to carry before eternal rest. Your humble servant begs of you today. Please find the strength to save us all. Chapter 908 A Cruel Fate Ridra woke up back on earth with a splitting backache. His neck and back muscles felt like he had manually plowed the fields for hours yesterday, even though he distinctly remembered not doing anything strenuous. You've got to be kidding me. Is it because I look handsome now? Does the unnamed god have such wild fantasies? To knock me out and use my body? No wonder he became the professor of the angels. Rudra had dark thoughts concerning the unnamed god. However, Gaia promptly interrupted him in order to stop his wild fantasies from taking form, as she informed Rudra of a very important piece of news. Master! Mistress Naomi is dead. Dot. Immediately Rudra jolted upright as his breathing quickened. He rushed to the hospital only to find hundreds of thousands of people queued outside the establishment with white roses and candles in hand. Mourning for the loss of the world's first lady. No. 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 This must be a lie. This can't be true. I can't lose Naomi. She is my wife. This cannot be happening. Rudra was in the first stage of shock, which was disbelief. He could not believe the news until he saw the body of his wife inside the damn coffin with his own eyes at which moment a primal scream escaped his mouth, creating a 5.7 richer earthquake across earth. Give her back to me! Give me back my wife! Rudra screamed to the heavens as he banged on her coffin and cried uncontrollably. He had swallowed the bitter pill when his parents died. He had swallowed it twice. However, he could not swallow the bitter pill of his wife's death. It was just too cruel for him. His newborn infants kept crying non-stop, and despite Yua's best attempts to breastfeed them and console them, they were inconsolable as if they had sensed the death of their beloved mother. Only when they were placed within Ridra's arms did the twins stop crying, as Ridra too mindlessly stared at his children's faces, trying to find some glimpses of Naomi inside them. It was the most difficult of times for Ridra, and the entirety of mankind grieved with him. However, in these tough times it was only his children for whom Ridra kept his act together, as by this point the big man had already had enough. Earth was finally safe, with the performance that Rudra had at the Immortal Arena, followed by the public announcement of the Angel Race, and the Army of Death to support Rudra had pretty much guaranteed the security of Earth for now. If it were not enough, however, the moment the unnamed god got involved even the threat of Lucifer was neutralized, as even the devil himself did not have the guts to mess with those chosen by the unnamed god himself. His mission to safeguard Earth was completed. Although many small things were yet to be smoothed out, Overall he was in a good place, and ready to return to Earth full time to work. However now, he returned to an empty planet. For the most precious being in the world had already been taken away from him. Leaving but a void in his heart that could never be filled. Rudra personally buried the coffin after digging a hole inside the house's backyard. His intent being that Naomi could watch the children play in the gardens even in the afterlife. Karna. Neatwit and Fatty stuck by Rudra's side, like glue the next few days. As little by little Rudra suppressed his raging emotions becoming an unfeeling cold monster. Max avoided Rudra as much as possible over the last few days. As the moment he saw his brother, he would start tearing up and crying in the memory of his big sister, cursing himself for her death and wondering if telling Rudra about her condition from the start could have saved her. Without the touch of a woman, the house of Rajputs became a cold place to be with only the rowdy men around. But the rowdiness was tamed by the goo ing sounds of two little life forms for whom the men remained strong and civil. Rudra did not know the circumstances surrounding Naomi's death, or how she chose to die rather than lose her memories. He had no idea about the letter that she left over her coffin, because Neatwit had taken it off before Rudra arrived. It was indeed exactly like Naomi had predicted. Rudra had become such an untouchable being now, that he himself was his only enemy. Despite being the greatest strategist, his mind was fickle to emotional stuff. As in the days following Naomi's death, 
His only solution to the smallest of problems was absolute destruction. Ridrick kept shaking his head wondering if this was the cruel fate that Hazrael had warned him about on that ship meeting. As he felt anger towards the angel race to not keep their end of the bargain by allowing Naomi to die. After three months had passed, Ridra finally ended his grieving as he buried himself in work. The betterment of earth being his only objective as he wanted to make it a golden place for his children to grow in. He made many sweeping changes. Unified the entire world into a single country and imposed global laws equally on all citizens. The first awakening had left a deep scar on the world. But from the ashes of death and destruction, the soil got the nutrients for creation as earth started to be rebuilt anew. Rudra realized that the world had become a place extremely prone to coastal flooding and earthquakes. Which is why he built a 60-foot tall wall across all coastal cities in the world. Using large battleships and construction crews hired from the universe as labor. Rudra also set up Australia as the only place where aliens could visit Earth. Setting up a trade city in that continent, as well as strong military bases and containment areas. Rudra studied international trade laws in depth and invited honorable merchant groups to Earth to trade in Earth's specialties. Slowly but steadily Ridra changed the world into becoming a better place for the next generation to be in. Chapter 909 The End Ridra found out about the seeds inside his own body about a year after Naomi's death. It was during a casual inspection of the cosmos, using his galactic eyes, that he noticed two bulging concentrations of mana inside his own kidneys. A very interesting and heated conversation with Gaia followed, where Ridra questioned her loyalty towards him to have not informed him of this procedure performed by the unnamed god for all these months. The seeds were peculiar because even with his galactic eyes Ridra could not figure out what exactly they were as inspection spells failed whenever he tried to use them. Ridra thought about cutting them out. However Gaia vehemently opposed that idea, and after a lot of back and forth, with his AI Ridra accepted the idea of letting the seeds stay in his body. Ridra knew that the seeds were definitely a great treasure, and for them to be planted in his body meant that there were grander schemes waiting for him, in which he was a participant not by will but by construction. Earth had changed a lot in the past year. And Ridra was finally starting to smile again, as the toddlers were finally learning to speak small words and learn how to walk. A disturbing problem had presented itself when Max was labeled as manless by the world when he got AF rated class by the Queen's assessment in a very public and humiliating ceremony. The good thing was that he seemed to have broken things off with his witch off a girlfriend. However, the bad thing was that following the humiliation, Max decided to move out of the upside and start living on his own. It pained Rudra to see his brother be so depressed and down in life. However, he had faith in the teachings of his father and mother, and knew that hardships would build character for Max, and someday his brother would shine, like the genius he was meant to be. Secretly, however, Rudra kept looking for a cure to rid Max off his manless status by somehow reviving his collapsed mana veins. As while the world did not know about the circumstances which led to Max becoming the way that he was. But Rudra did. It was the cursed incident all those years ago, when Max jumped into Rudra's cultivator pod, that his mana veins collapsed. An incident for which Rudra blamed himself till this day. Despite his best efforts, he had been unsuccessful in finding a cure till now. Even after being willing to trade the Earth's special destroyer class battleships, he found no one with a cure to Max's problem. This was the absolute best that Rudra could do, as any more would need him to be gone from the solar system for extended amounts of time, and undertake an adventure himself. It was not a risk that Rudra was willing to take at the moment as it was a huge security risk for the entire planet should he leave. The true elite's guild was slowly taking shape inside Sigma, and Karna was leading them brilliantly having already formed a headquarters in a distant alien planet. However, despite the true elite's guild having a tier 4 Karna to lead them, the overall strength of planet Earth as a whole remained pitiful. There were only four tier 4 warriors total, two belonging to the true elite's guild, Karna and Neatwit while the other two being Angel from Dark Faction and Master of Chaos an ex-elite turned mercenary in Sigma. This meant that Earth's defenses and overall strength without Rudra was absolutely pitiful, and even a few pirate groups could ravage the planet without Rudra present to defend its borders. Earth now operated a fleet of 13 destroyer ships, and had reconstructed two of the fallen pirate frigates to have a total of 15 ships for defending the planet, which was quite the overkill, as it was technically enough to protect a dozen planets. However, with the men and women handling the ships still being weak, there was always uncertainty about performance when facing an actual war. Overall Earth and Earthlings had a lot more respect and standing in the universe than they deserved due to the legend of Shakuni the Undefeated. And although relative peace covered the planet since the First Awakening, humans from Earth had been involved in a lot of fights across Sigma Universe. There was a strong belief amongst Earthlings that war was the best way to improve after studying the life of Shakuni the Human God. 
and their passion for participating in wars earned the humans from planet hashtag H 2047 the nickname Warheads. It was said that hashtag H 2047 was a planet of mad war loving humans run by a mad war loving leader. A different iteration of Omega. It was a casual day in office for Rudra. As he studied the political alliances of the universe, when he got a feed message from Gaia telling him that he is watchable feed from a new iteration of Omega. Rudra was immediately intrigued as he permitted Gaia to show him the feed as nostalgia flooded him with the first scenery of Purple Haze City. It was the Purple Haze City of the old. One run by King Cervantes back in the day. With his impudent kid Amon still roaming around and the ba asterisk 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 mage Rahim still in office. Everything looked about the same except for the fact that the temple situated inside the inner district was not just of the goddess of light Benigar, but beside her temple stood an equally magnificent temple of the god of humans. Rudra chuckled as goosebumps arose on his skin when he looked at his own legacy. The priest of his temple was actually a holy knight, who was clad in full armor, with what looked to be an imitation of the grim reaper around his waist. There were many who came to pray in the temple of the human god. And when Rudra looked at the sculpture situated at the heart of the temple, he got a shiver sent down his spine once more. It was a statue that was a spitting image of himself in battle. The sculptor having captured his intensity and posture perfectly. As he was clad in full armor, with both his swords in his hands, and in a weird slashing pose. While those praying might not understand the secret behind this pose, Rudra himself knew exactly what it was. It was the pose of the moment where he severed Lucifer's arm and freed the other gods from their prison. Rudra was admiring his own beauty when he heard a prayer from one of the followers kneeling in front of a statue. The prayer going something like this. Oh Lord Shikuni, the undefeated, the god of humans, the dragon slayer, the savior of Thal village, the first cultivator, the breaker of limits, the legendary demon slayer, the powerhouse, the history maker, the supreme overlord, and the god of war. Please heed the prayer of this petty human kneeling before you today. Just like yourself, I am a human trying to scale the heavens, but unlike you, I do not have allies to help me scale this journey. Please accept me within your church and protect me as your own. Dot. Rudra chuckled hearing the prayer as he watched closely to see if anything happened within Omega. And indeed it did, as golden light shone over the praying man's body, as a gray wolf crest was burnt over his forehead signaling the mark of the human god. The man seemed elated beyond words as he cried and profoundly thanked Rudra. His actions causing Rudra to feel a bit awed, as for the first time ever he realized just the kind of legacy he had left inside Omega for the future iterations to see. Looking back now, it was indeed a wild ride. However, he and his elites had definitely left a legacy worthy of making the entire universe tremble for generations to come. Feeling pumped by this recap, Rudra felt a passion to be relit inside his belly that had been extinguished over the past year. The fire that had burnt raging hot during his Omega days, and a fire he thought would never be lost. It was the fire of self-improvement, and the fire to stand at the top of the universe. Having stayed in his office for so long Rudra had not entered Sigma even once for playing the game since the first awakening. His only entry being the war he fought with Raxa a year ago. He had simply not felt like entering. And the burdens of protecting Earth made him unable to act rattily. As a result, he had stagnated in growth over the past one year not even accumulating a single strand of EXP. However, watching this scene Rudra refound his passion for gaming, as he was reminded of his true identity. That of a mad gamer. He had laid dormant for too long. But the time to remain sulking in his office was over. It was time to return to the gaming world and remind the universe of who exactly Shakuni of the Elites was. With a wide grin on his face, Rudra mouthed the words. Log into Sigma. Dot. Forward slash forward slash forward slash a slash. And this is the last official chapter of the main storyline. And it is with a heavy heart and a big smile that I. Raj Shah. Announce the completion of MMOPRG. Rebirth of the Strongest Guild Master. If you are reading this chapter then you love this story as much as I do. Maybe even more for which I am incredibly grateful. To fans such as yourself. I hope to see you all inside the sequel MMORPG. Rebirth of the Strongest Vampire God. Where we continue observing the adventures of our favorite cast amongst many new members. I will not leave you all on a sad note. Instead, I will promise you a happy one. Although this is the last official chapter of the book. There will be a side story released for the book in 2023. The title of the side story being MMORPG, The Secret Wars. A story seeing the elites band together for one last universe-shaking adventure inside Sigma. Since this is the last author note I will be writing, I want to express my heartfelt gratitude to every single fan of the book. As without you, this journey would never have been possible. But even amongst all the fans, this book would especially not be possible without a few extremely precious ones. 
And inside the last chapter one want to give a shout out to my top 10 fans who have supported me throughout this journey from day one. So a very special shout out to 1. Cervantes91 aka Emperor Cervantes 2. Omar Alshake aka God Omar 3. Savanthi 4. Magnum932 5. The No One aka Yum 6. Leo Crispii, Guildmaster Karna 7. Irel Griffin 8. Anton Kartunin 9. Adrian Hadron 10. Tikbo Thank you for the patronage forward slash forward slash forward slash although this is the last official chapter of the book there will be a side story released for the book in 2023 the title of the side story being mmrpg the secret wars a story seeing the elites band together for one last universe shaking adventure inside sigma since this is the last author note i will be writing i want to express my heartfelt gratitude to every single fan of the book as without you this journey would never have been possible but even amongst all the fans this book would especially not be possible without a few extremely precious ones. And inside the last chapter one want to give a shout out to my top 10 fans who have supported me throughout this journey from day one. So a very special shout out to 1. Cervantes91 aka Emperor Cervantes 2. Omar Alshake aka God Omar 3. Savanthi 4. Magnum932 5. The No One aka Yum 6. Leo Crispii, Guildmaster Karna 7. Irel Griffin. 8. Anton Kartunin. 9. Adrian Hadron. 10. Tikbo. Thank you for the patronage. Forward slash forward slash forward slash 10. Tikbo. Thank you for the patronage. Forward slash forward slash forward slash.